Robbie Berger, Bobby Fairways, Brilliantly Dumb. This is the swing review that nobody asked for. But in all seriousness, when we watch an amateur swing on YouTube, a lot of times those things that they're working on translate really well to our game and what we're working on as amateurs on the golf course. So let's see what we can learn from Robbie here in this swing. First thing I notice at address, it's a nice athletic stance, but the biggest thing I notice is how far away from the ball he is standing. Look at his hands in terms of his face and how far away his hands are. Pros a lot of times have their hands more right below their chin or their nose. You can see his hands are out by the brim of his cap. You'll see why at impact he's doing this, whether he knows it or not. Now let's move all the way to shaft parallel here in the, in the backswing. Pretty good position. Don't have a lot of uh, tips here. I like the athleticism. I like the position. The only thing that I could maybe nitpick on is that his club face is a little bit too closed. This can cause some problems at impact here with uh, possibly a hard miss left. I would open up that face a little bit, maybe a weaker grip, um, but pretty good here. Now when we get to arm parallel, you can see not a lot of shoulder turn, and it stays that way all the way into the top transition. His shoulders aren't even close to 90 degrees. Whether this is a mobility issue, maybe he's trying to aim the ball, um, doesn't have a ton of confidence in his swing. A bigger shoulder turn will do a lot of good for him. One, it will increase that hip shoulder separation, which adds uh, club speed, ball speed, and distance, but it also helps sequencing. Picture the golf swing as two halves, the bottom half and the top half of your body. If your top half is further along in the sequence of the golf swing compared to your bottom half, then at impact, your shoulders will open up too soon before impact, which again will lead to more of a aiming the golf ball rather than swinging aggressively and confidently. Another thing a bigger shoulder turn allows is for your hands to get under plane slash on plane in your downswing. A lot of guys with uh, small shoulder turns end up being steep because there's not enough time in transition for the hands to drop into a good position as you start your downswing. Okay, now let's get into the downswing here. Um, you can see looking okay, but now is when we start to see his hips and his head moving towards the golf ball. Now, remember in the beginning at his address, I mentioned that his hands were quite far away from his body and he was standing far away from the golf ball. Again, whether he's doing this on purpose or he doesn't quite realize it, the reason he's standing that far away from the golf ball is to allow himself to still have room, knowing his hips are going to move closer to the golf ball. If he didn't stand far away from that ball, he'd run out of room with his hands in, uh, at impact and he'd hit a ton of dreaded s word there it is um, or shots off the heel would be his miss so what he's doing is giving himself room even though he's you know moving towards the ball into impact and you'll see it it continues to look that way at impact here now one other note at impact um, along the sim similar lines if you look at professionals drive the golf ball that right elbow, the trail elbow, is tucked right up against their body. Um, you can see the gap here between his right elbow and his hip. And what that does is it makes that swing path, it makes it really difficult to swing in to out. He's going to struggle swinging out to in, coming over top of the golf ball, um, because that right arm is becoming too dominant in the swing, specifically at impact. This combined with that closed face that he had in his backswing at shaft parallel um, tells me that uh, he's going to struggle left to right uh, from swing to swing. This is hard to, to duplicate and replicate consistently and hit the ball straight. So if there were two things that I would suggest uh, Robbie practice, it would be one, keeping his hips back throughout his entire swing. This is going to make his swing feel so much easier and so much smoother and less effort. Um, if he keeps those hips where they start, and, and one thing I like to do is, is do little half swings with an iron, picturing my back end is up against a wall and keeping it up against that wall throughout the entire swing. The second thing that I would really encourage him to do would be to work on that shoulder turn. It might feel uncomfortable at first. Um, he might be concerned about 
really, really poor ball contact, and it might be a little bit of a learning curve, but if he can get those shoulders turning more, it will really help his sequencing and his pattern between his lower half and his upper half. And in the long run, he'll gain distance. And again, between that and his hip staying back, the swing will feel much more effortless and his accuracy and ball striking will also increase. So Robbie, I hope that helps your swing if you're watching. And if you're watching at home, um, take a look at your swing. You might have some common themes here that we saw with Robbie and uh, you might be able to take this home with you and work on your game yourself.